Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I am really excited to kick off my individual Pokemon analysis series for VGC 2017. What this series is meant to do is basically, in a 15 or so minute video, educate you completely on one of the Pokemon in the format and tell you sample sets you can use, sample partners you can use, ways to beat it, why people use it, and why you might want to consider it, and just an overall discussion on the Pokemon. So, you know, I'm going to try to cover as much as possible while not taking too much of your time, and hopefully by the end of it you'll have some sense of how the Pokemon operates and potential ways to run it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this series, and if you do, please share your support by leaving a like on this video and giving me any feedback. Also, let me know what Pokemon you want to see uh, covered next on this series and please go upvote the comments in the description below um you know, if someone else has said the Pokemon you want to see, just go give that comment a like, and so that way I'll see what Pokemon are the highest demanded in the comments below. But I'm really excited to be doing this series, and I want to do it on a far more consistent basis than I have in previous years. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, and for those that might not know who I am, my name is Aaron Zhang, I go by Cybertron, and I've been a VGC player since its first year in 08. I've won a couple of regional and national championships, and I got third at Worlds in 2013, qualified for Worlds seven times, and commentated US Nationals and Worlds last year. Year. So I've been playing VGC for a while and hopefully I can draw from my you know previous knowledge to help you guys and help make these guides and I do put a fair amount of time into these so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy the first one we'll be doing is a highly demanded one on none the, the one and only Pelipper so let's jump into it. As always, I kind of look at base stats first to give you some context before really diving into things, and Pelipper honestly has a really average base stat distribution. If you look at just his base stats, you'd probably wonder, why would I even use Pelipper? You know, it's got a really mediocre base stat total overall, you know, 60 HP, 100 offense, 70 special offense, that's pretty average, 95 special attack and 50 attack, like offensively it's not that great, and then just a mediocre 65 speed. So, if you were to just judge Pelipper by its base stats overall, you know, you could say, okay, it has an okay defense and special attack but other than that I don't see much reason why I would use it so why do people want to use Pelipper and why is it viable in this format well to answer that question we have to look at a bunch of things first of all Pelipper is one of the two drizzle users in this format next to Politoed of course drizzle allows you to just automatically set up the rain and if you've paid attention or watched VGC at all in the past you would have seen that Politoed was one of the most common Pokemon back in 2012 2013 2014 and even used a lot in 2015 so why is it a lot less viable now? Well, Politoed loses tutor moves such as Icy Wind and Helping Hand, and those were significant for it in terms of uh, you know support in a VGC battle. Now that it doesn't have those, you know it's still a solid Pokemon. It gets access to moves like Scald, Ice Beam, Encore, etc. But Icy Wind and Helping Hand were really good on it. So Politoed's you know a little bit less viable now, making Pelipper more viable. And of course, their typings are a little bit different in the sense that Pelipper is Flying type. Pelipper also gets access to some things that Politoed doesn't. Uh, Pelipper also counters opposing weather and weakens fire types. Uh, Torkoal, you know, for example, is one of the biggest uh, examples of this where, you know, if you're going up against a Torkoal, you can bring in your Pelipper, and not only does that decrease the attack of their fire type attacks, it's also it also means that Torkoal is basically in a really bad position because it's either forced to switch out or just get knocked out. Pelipper is one of the few viable Tailwind users in this format, and that kind of goes in hand with what I was saying about Politoed in the sense that uh, Politoed, you know, now doesn't have very many means of speed control, maybe not in, in, in any at all, but uh, Pelipper now, of course, does have Tailwind, and so not only does it have this incredible ability in Drizzle, it can also set up Tailwind, and there aren't that many Pokemon in this format that can't even set up Tailwind, so that's a big, big deal, because speed control is really important in any VGC format. As mentioned earlier, you know, it does have the flying type as well, so it gets uh, same type attack bonus with Scald and Hurricane, and that makes Scald and Hurricane do a little bit more damage, not to mention that Rain will boost Scald damage as well. So despite a mediocre base special attack, uh, with the boosts, you can actually do a lot of damage, and with the Z move, you can actually pick up uh, one-hit KOs outright. Uh, Pelipper is really cool because it's kind of versatile, and it works with really any kind of speed control. And what that means is it's not one of those Pokemon that's super fast, like, uh, you know, uh, Tapu Koko, for example, and you know, really kind of relies on just outspeeding things and would kind of falter under Trick Room. It's not one of those Pokemon that are super slow and just rely on Trick Room. Instead, it's in that speed tier where it's like, okay, if I Tailwind, I can outspeed everything, but I can also operate under Trick Room, and I work with Tailwind, uh, or excuse me, Thunder Wave and Icy Wind as well. So it's got a lot of options. And finally, Pelipper sets up partners for 100% accurate thunders. Electric type, really strong in this format. You know, kind of ironic since he kind of just beats Pelipper. But, um, you know, if you're going, as we'll go into the partner slides later, uh, with a strong electric type Pokemon, then now you can use Thunder, which is an even stronger alternative. Normally, you don't want to use it because its accuracy is really bad. But with the rain up, of course, it becomes fully accurate. So, a couple reasons why Pelipper is actually viable and why I think it's pretty solid in this format. 
So, quick look at the moves that Pelipper gets and what I have kind of designated as maybe the most common ones and the best ones. Uh, I think Pelipper is one of those Pokemon where it's like, okay, it's relatively predictable because uh, it doesn't have that much diversity in terms of attacks, but uh, for the most part, it does a really good job with the attacks it has. So, I think from the most commonly seen section, you'll probably see three out of four of those moves. Uh, you know, pretty much against all Pelipers you go up against, maybe even four out of four, and then sometimes maybe that fourth one will come out of the may want to consider section, or sometimes maybe um, your opponent will have a move that I haven't put up here, but for the most part, I think these are the most competitively viable ones. Uh, Skull, Hurricane, Tailwind, Protect, those are kind of no-brainers. Wide Guard's a really cool move, and it allows you to actually synergize with yourself as well, so if you're using, for example, a Discharge user, such as Zucker Tree, then you can use Wide Guard to protect yourself while doing damage to your opponent. Hydro Pump's also a really strong option, obviously it does more damage than Scald, but you do have to risk missing the attack. Other strong attacks that I think you may want to consider are Roost, which can heal yourself, Ice Beam, which is huge against Dragon types, such as Salamence and Garchomp, Sky Drop, which is a really fun option because it allows you to uh, kind of create a situation where your partner is protected a little bit better, Surf, especially if you're synergizing with Water type Pokemon or Pokemon with Storm Drain, uh, for example, Gastrodon. Soak is a really cool one that I haven't seen people use yet, but I think is actually very viable. And the idea behind Soak is you turn a Pokemon into a uh, Water typing, and so that synergizes nicely with the electric type Pokemon you might want to use with Pelipper and Substitute. Uh, Pelipper also, of course, gets access to stuff like Swagger, but for the most part, I think these are the moves that you'll see most commonly on Pelipper, and if you're building a set, you'll probably want to use these as well. So, what items to use on Pelipper? Uh, basically, I've listed a couple of the most viable ones. Of course, there are definitely ones that I have not mentioned that you can definitely try out, but I think if you have no idea what Pelipper does or you don't know what to expect from you know a Pelipper when you're playing against it, these are the most common ones you'll probably run into. Uh, both the water and flying gems, uh, or I guess the Z crystals, are really strong. Uh, water is the most intuitive one because you have the same type of attack bonus and the rain boost, but uh, flying is actually pretty cool because you know some ways to beat Pelipper are using Pokemon that resist its water type attacks and those are typically water pokemon dragon pokemon grass type pokemon so with the flying z crystal uh you can may maybe just potentially pick up a one hit knockout on the pokemon that maybe we're expecting to survive an attack or two a sash allows you to guarantee two attacks pretty much um or sorry it allows you to survive two attacks uh, which assists you in setting up tailwind Mystic Water is one of those items where it's like, oh, it actually does a pretty nice boost to its water type attacks. And obviously that's only uh, an item for basically one move, maybe two if you run both Sky Scald and Hydro Pump. But uh, it's free damage boosting basically, and you're not getting, uh, you're not losing anything from it. Uh, Citrus Berry I think is pretty good, especially on bulkier variants. Life Orb, similar to the attack boosting ones earlier, but you will have to take recoil damage. But of course it works for more than just water type attacks or, you know, specific typings. And then you have Choice Scarf and Choice Specs. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of these, but like with the Choice Scarf, you can definitely catch your opponent off guard, and uh, that's really nice if you have a fast partner, so you can have a quick like one-two punch where it's like, oh, you know, it's a Tapu Koko and a Pelipper. Tapu Koko's fast, Pelipper's slow, so I'll probably be able to just pick off the Pelipper, but if you go quickly and you have the Choice Scarf, then you can just double target for a quick knockout. And then Choice Specs is really great damage output if you can set it up properly, and what I mean is either, you know, protect it from its weaknesses or set up Trick Room so it can kind of just sweep away. Uh, you really want Specs for Pokemon uh, in sets where it's like, okay, I don't have to worry about getting attacked, I can just kind of dish out damage and hopefully knock things out before I get knocked out. So, just a couple of strong items for you to consider. Uh, so now I'm going to dive into sample sets, and I'm going to give you guys three sample sets. So this first one is a modest one, which is called Hurricane Tail, and then Protect, and this one runs the Water Z Crystal. So uh, with those speed EVs, I'll actually go into uh, uh, all the speed EVs a little bit later, and EV and Pelipper in general, but this is kind of like, okay, I hit as hard as possible because I'm modest nature. Um, I have enough speed EVs to let with Tailwind. I'm outspeeding, I believe it's Tapu Koko for this spread, and anything slower than Tapu Koko, so base 130s. And then with 132 HP, basically I dumped everything else into HP for max bulk and survivability. So this one's like, okay, I hit really hard, I utilize Tailwind well, and I still have some bulk to take advantage of. The next one is a max speed, max special attack one. You could definitely take special attack EVs out and put it into bulk, but uh, the max speed here is really important. You do need 252 speed and timid nature. Same set as the last one. And this one is with the flying Z crystal. And if you're curious about this, I actually did some research and Adamant Tapu Bulu with max speed, so 252 speed EVs, is one speed point lower than this Pelipper. So 
if you're having trouble against, uh, you know, like Tapu Bulus that are maybe a little bit bulkier or ones that are admin, of course, if it's Jolly, then it can just outspeed and knock you out. But if it's admin or something that's more bulky, then you can actually just pick up the one hit KO immediately with Hurricane and the Flying Z gem. So that might be something to catch Tapu Bulus off guard, especially as they become more popular as the season progresses. And for the last one, credits to a uh, user on Twitter for this one. I'll put it in the description below. But uh, he basically came up with a pretty cool spread. It, like lifts, I believe, like modest uh, Scarf Draco Meteor from Salamence while also being able to KO with Ice Beam. So that's why it does run Ice Beam here. You got Scald, Ice Beam, Tailwind, and Protect. I have Tailwind on all of these because I think Tailwind's a really good move and it helps out pretty much any team that it's on. Um, of course, not if you're using like full Trick Room or something like that. But in general, I think Tailwind's a really solid option. This one has Citrus Berry because you pick up the knock out onto like Garchomp and Salamence with Ice Beam already so don't need that increase in special attack and it just allows you to survive a little bit longer with Citrus Berry. So all of these three stats will be in the description below in terms of being exportable so you can try them out on Pokemon Showdown if you so wish. Of course there's so many different Palipper sets but these are just three examples to get you started. So regarding EV spreads this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. I think the most important thing when it comes to Pelipper is if you are using Tailwind you really need to keep Tailwind in mind when you're constructing your EV spreads. So if you're modest with 31 speed IV but zero speed EVs, you reach a base stat of, or a, a speed stat of 85, and of course Tailwind doubles your speed stat, so that gets to 170 under Tailwind. That actually outspeeds Garchomp and anything slower than it after Tailwind, which is pretty nice. So you don't even need any investment to outspeed Garchomp uh, if you do set up a Tailwind. Now, if you do want to outspeed some stuff with modest nature and 124 speed EVs and a 31 speed IV, you'll reach a stat of 101. That's gonna double up to 202, which is more than uh, max speed Tapu Koko and anything slower it than it. And of course, with Timid Max Speed, you'll outspeed pretty much the uh, majority of things in the format. Uh, but you'll also outspeed Admin Max Speed Tapu Bulu before the Tailwind. So, you know, I didn't go too much into defensive damage calcs in Pelipper, and part of that's because I don't even know what Pelipper, uh, what attacks, you know, Pelipper really struggles against, because it's just really frail in general for the most part, and so I like kind of going with the generic bulk spreads, and this is something where it's like, feel free to take one of the spreads and then use it on your team, and then, you, you know, see what attacks give you trouble in particular, you know, is there like one special attack from this one Pokemon that you're always struggling against? Maybe invest in some more special defense, same goes for a physical type Pokemon, so these are more general spreads to get you started, and then you can tailor them uh, specifically towards your team. So how do you beat Pelipper? Well Pelipper is one of those Pokemon like I mentioned where it's like it's still pretty fur at the end of the day and here are a couple of examples of how I would approach uh, defeating Pelipper. So the first is just knocking it out before it's able to set up Tailwind and that's just doubling up onto it with two really strong Pokemon that are faster than it. Definitely want to take advantage of its mediocre speed. If you can knock it out before it sets up Tailwind then it's a significantly less of a threat. Uh, of course sometimes it might not even have Tailwind but the idea is it is easily double uh, targetable. You can also counter with your own weather and you have to win the weather war uh, of course but using Pokemon such as Alolan Ninetales to decrease the water uh, kind of increased damage from the rain or even your own Torkoal like uh, although Pelipper, you know, yeah, I don't know, bring Torkoal specifically against Pelipper, that sounds kind of weird, right? But uh, sometimes if you are able to bring the Torkoal out after Pelipper is already out, then you'll get rid of the rain and then uh, the damage output will be significantly decreased because now the sun is up as well. Of course, intuitively, Electric-type Pokemon and Electric-type attacks are Pelipper's worst enemies. And, you know, when I was looking at items to consider, I was like, I guess you could use a Whack and Berry, but the thing is, like, the strongest Electric-type Pokemon still just attack through it and pick up the one-hit KO. So, Pokemon like Tapu Koko, Zucker Tree, Alolan Raichu, they all just really, really, really uh, are able to outspeed and just pick up a one-hit KO. Of course, just teching in Thunderbolt into any Pokemon that may learn it is helpful as well. Examples such as Tapu Lele. Also, Pokemon that can just deal massive amounts of damage in one hit. Some examples are Tapu Lele, Tapu Fini, and uh, the Ultra Beast. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that still, but yeah. Uh, those are all Pokemon that can just uh, either outspeed it. Um, I mean, in terms of Tapu Fini, uh, if you're running Jolly, you can outspeed it for sure. And just either using the Terrain Boost or a Z move or an item boosting attack, like just pick up a one-hit KO outright. And then bulky Pokemon like, can soak up its attacks and waste Tailwind. So... Tailwind's a really big threat, especially if the partner that Pelipper is with is able to just fully sweep under it. So you kind of want to waste Tailwind, uh, and there are, you know, obviously are a lot of bulky Pokemon that can take Pelipper's attacks or uh, are bulky in general, but some examples are like Milotic, Gudra, Tapu Fini, Gashiron. Those all don't, you know, get damaged by the water type attacks at all. I can take those Hurricanes well as well. And as a result, you know, it's like, okay, Pelipper, you can set up Tailwind, but what exactly are you going to do with it? So just some examples on how to beat it. Overall, keep in mind that Pelipper is just kind of frail and it's probably going to be EV defensively a little bit in HP like don't be surprised to see max HP because it doesn't need as much investment in speed
speed, especially with the Tailwind option. But even with that, you know, it's still like pretty easy to knock out if you just double target it. You know, sometimes it might take three hits, but uh, you just really don't want it to get like a super effective attack off or uh, allow it to, for example, like burn any physical type attackers you might have with Skull. So some potential partners for you to try out if you do want to use Pelipper. Uh, these are just a couple of examples. I think uh, in 2017 specifically, like you can really try everything with everything. But if you have no way, no idea where to start, here are some examples. Uh, Tapu Koko and Zergatry because both of those, uh, you know, get boosted uh, and their thunders will become 100% accurate. Uh, of course, with Tapu Koko, it's even stronger because there's an electric terrain. And with Zergatry, you can help its average mediocre speed by setting up a Tailwind. And a Zergatry, when it's faster than everything, is really, really scary. Garchomp and Crocodile are pretty cool uh, partners as well because they're able to get Earthquakes off without worrying about its partner since of course Pelipper is flying type. Also covers the electric type weakness that the uh, Pelipper has. Alola Marowak, another great Pokemon, also kind of similar, you know, it doesn't use Earthquake as frequently because it does get access to Boomerang, but Lightning Rod protection is incredible, and I actually see a lot of Pelipper teams with Alola Marowak, because if you don't have Discharge, then you have no way to hit the Pelipper for super effective damage, really, really cool mom, and honestly can operate on their Tailwind as well, uh, obviously it's still really slow, but this whole metagame is slow, so it's like if you get, uh, give Alola Marowak a boost, it'll still be able to outspeed most things. Uh, Celesteela, of course, you can reduce Alistila's fire type weakness with the rain up, and that's a big deal because fire is uh, one of the few types, or it might be the only type that actually hits it for super effective. And so Celesteela is already one of the bulkier Pokemon in the format. That just makes it more annoying to deal with. Porygon 2 and other Trick Room users, such as Oranguru and Mimikyu, helps you set up Trick Room, allows you to get two means of speed control with Tailwind and Trick Room. And then finally, two Swift Swim users. So... I think uh, rain in general is kind of less viable of a strategy than ever because there's no Ludicolo, no Kingdra, no Pokemon like that where it's like, oh, uh, I have a very, very strong rain mode where, you know, in previous years, if you had Politoed Kingdra, Politoed Ludicolo, that immediately could just sweep through a ton of teams because of the synergy, you know, with Ludicolo, it just got access to so many great attacks and it had Fake Out, it had uh, just a um, really strong overall typing and with Kingdra also, you know, got access to Draco Meteor and some really strong water type attacks, so... Uh, Polyrath and Karakas and all the other Swift Sim users, they're definitely, I think, a lot less stronger than the ones we've seen allowed in previous VGC years. So, as a result, that makes Rain as a strategy overall not as good, but uh, I, I definitely want to see someone try out Polyrath and Karakas, especially because both of these Pokemon do have access to stat-increasing moves such as Belly Drum and Smel uh, Shell Smash on those two respectively. So, you know, don't give up on the Rain strategy. I'm not saying it's not viable. I'm just saying definitely going to be a little bit trickier because before it's like, oh, let me just slam Politoed and Ludicolo together or Politoed and Kingdra. Uh, now you definitely have to think a little bit more, but I think that makes things a little bit more exciting. So, in conclusion, Pelipper, despite its relatively poor stats, I think it's got a lot of potential, guys, and I think you'll be seeing a decent amount of it. I don't think it's going to centralize the metagame, I don't think it's going to be the most common Pokemon, but I think it definitely has its spot on a lot of teams, and I think it's a really cool Pokemon, and I never had imagined that Pelipper would be viable competitively in VGC uh, after, you know, playing regular Pokemon for all these years and VGC for all these years. So... Like I mentioned, its move pool is somewhat limited, but it really makes good use of what it does have. Uh, Rain is a strategy, I've already talked about this, but it's probably going to be less common. But, you know, Pelipper is one of those Pokemon where it's like, I don't need a Rain team for it to function. You know, I don't even need anything else that can take advantage of the Rain, because Pelipper itself is just a pretty strong standalone Pokemon. Like, Drizzle itself is a good enough ability where you don't need a Rain team. You can, uh, that ability itself will provide you some utility in your matches. And if you're struggling against a fire type, you want to use a Tailwind user, or you think Pelipper is just really cool, definitely want to consider it because I think, uh, you know, definitely has its spot on teams as mentioned. So that is pretty much going to wrap up this guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Didn't want to make it too long, but basically these are what these guides are meant to do. I educate you on what the Pokemon does, give you some sample sets, talk about partners and ways to beat it and items it could use. And I, you know, hopefully by the end of all of this, you've learned something about Pelipper and how to use it competitively. And if you want to try it out, I've got the three sample sets in the description below. But yeah, this is the start of many, many guides on the channel. Of course, Road to Rank will still be coming out as uh, frequently as possible, but really want to do these two kind of series as my main two things for the season. And of course, you know, I want to expand to a lot more like team building and battling against, you know, top players and best of threes and metagame analyses and whatnot. But yeah. That is going to be it for this one, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like if you do and share it with anyone who wants to use Pelipper in VGC or just is looking uh, into getting into VGC 17. If you haven't watched my team building guide or my Road to Rank series, I'll link both of those in the description below as well. I think they're pretty helpful, hopefully. And that will be it for this guide. 
please don't forget to also go comment in the description below what Pokemon you want to go see next and upvote any of those comments that you kind of agree with. So yeah, it's going to be it for this one. I will see you guys with the next guide and with the road to ranked very soon. All right. Thank you for watching guys. Peace.